What's up guys, welcome to How To Crypto. My name's Derek and today we are looking at Chain Games. If you don't know what Chain Games is, it is basically sports gambling, but with crypto. Bet on your Madden games, on your Call of Duty games, and hopefully a lot more going forward, but they are at least trying to be a way that people can create eSports bets with each other without a middleman. So rather than having a place like DraftKings where you place your bets, and if you bet $10 and you win, you probably only get like eight bucks because DraftKings is taking a couple of bucks. This is a way that you can create smart contracts with cryptocurrency so that if I wanted to play you in a match of Madden, we could place a bet for 10 chain games. Whoever wins just automatically gets the money. And ideally we don't have to pay any fees to that intermediary that was facilitating our bet. So that's essentially the problem that chain games is trying to solve. Let's go ahead and go over to their website. I'm gonna do a brief review of some of that stuff. And then we're gonna actually use their platform Platform called Super Crypto Card. Apart from trying to enable the betting on all of the games that already exist out there, they actually have a lot of free applications that they plan to come out with. And the one that's already out is called Super Crypto Card. So we're gonna be taking a look at that. So let's go ahead and check out their roadmap here. Now with their roadmap, all I'm really gonna say is that a lot of this looks awesome. All of their promises here look great. And the, the main one I think are these two right here, fantasy sports integration and console integration. If they can be more efficient Efficient than DraftKings or FanDuel, and it can take a portion of that market. That's massive. That is a humongous industry. So if they can help reduce fees, which also just in increases the uh, chances for people to walk away with profit. They'll get bigger wins. They won't have as many fees taken away from them. So it will be very attractive to sports gamblers. And then console integration, this would just be me being able to be on my Xbox or PlayStation and bet that way, which is a lot easier than having to do it on the computer here because a lot of gamers are on traditional consoles. Now, what I'll say before I go into this review is that this is a very early project and as I was doing this review, because it has been on my schedule now to do for a couple weeks, I was realizing that it might even be something that is more fair to review in a few months because they're so early, uh, like a lot of these altcoin projects, that we really are guessing which teams are going to make it from here because this project needs to exist. The problem is we don't know if Chain Games is going to be the company to bring it about or not. And this is just a general point that I'll make to a lot of the cryptocurrencies that I review. Is it a good idea to have cryptocurrency facilitate smart contracts so that we can do sports betting with lower fees? Absolutely. Is Chain Games going to be the company to do it? Who knows, right? Are they going to partner with Microsoft and Sony and get on console integration? Or is Microsoft and Sony just gonna make their own cryptocurrency and not even let chain games take over? And that's something to consider with all these markets. A lot of these, or a lot of these cryptos, all right? A lot of them are like, we're gonna take down this giant company because we're gonna be the crypto of that industry. So just think, how would someone combat this from even happening, right? If they were about to take a large percentage of the market, could these big companies just do it themselves? It's just a question to ask yourselves. But again, this roadmap looks beautiful. And if they can do it, this is going to be an amazing project. However, let's check out some of the things that are a little more negative about the project I'm not trying to be here just to spread FUD on projects that I know a ton of people are invested in, as well as myself. I do have a decent amount of chain games. I'll always tell you if I own uh, something that I'm covering or not. Uh, for the most part, I cover cryptocurrencies that I don't feel like are living up to their hype. And uh, for that reason, I usually don't own the cryptocurrencies, but I actually do own some chain games because a lot of you probably follow Sheldon Evans like myself and he told us to buy it, right? And I never sold mine. I wish I would have sold it at like a buck or something. Right now it's at like 17 cents just to give you a perspective. It is uh, May 20th and yesterday was Black Wednesday. It was one of the worst crypto days ever. So yeah, this 15 cent chain game price uh, hasn't been around for a while. Uh, so if you do like what you see today then it might be a good time for you to buy if you are quick to watching this video but uh my videos are never financial advice we are just uh, reviewing the projects from a user standpoint when we actually go to their battle station here the dashboard this is where i would go if i actually wanted to bet money so i already have my account set up and then i'd come down here and let's say i want to play call of duty then i'd come down here and i just pick the event of where i want to bet now here's kind of the issue 
there's not really a lot of players. We got two people in these events and they are sponsored events. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but that probably has something to do with why there are some people already in it. If I go down all of the matches here, you will see that zero out of 50 are registered for all of the upcoming matches. If I go over to Madden, you will also see that no one is signed up for anything. And um, it's going to be the same with all the other ones. Okay, I accidentally exited out of that, but you can go through yourself. This is just one of those things where it's an application that makes a lot of sense and no one's using it. And it's a lot like shopping.io where it's an application that makes sense that no one's using. And that's why when I look at these crypto products that aren't being actively used, it makes me think one of two things. One, is it really that early and I shouldn't even be judging the project for not having anyone using it yet? Or two, is this something that I probably don't want to hold long term? And if anything, just trade it when you can and not worry about holding it until the company has a little bit more proven track record to show it is something to hold long term. So let's go ahead and try to play some super crypto cart because this is something that if you caught my video last week on why BitClout is for sure a scam, you know that I said that I'm going to be betting actual chain games live on this video with you. Now, here's the reason why I won't be betting chain games today and just be playing a single player match for you. Because I come over here, I connected my MetaMask wallet. I've got some DAI over here. I've got some Ethereum. I don't have any chain games over here. I was going to swap my DAI for some chain games. I do have chain games over on my Coinbase wallet. When I try to send that, the Ethereum fee is a lot of money. It's well over $40 if I wanted to send my chain um, over here. So what I did is yesterday I went to go buy some more Ethereum, especially because Ethereum was like 2,200 bucks yesterday and for the sake of this tutorial. So I went to wire, that didn't work. So I went to deposit some ether. I actually had spent $50 on Ethereum on Coinbase and then I sent it over here. And then by that time it was already worth only 30 bucks. So it's only 36 because it's gone up today, Ethereum. And, um, but yesterday I had sent Ethereum over cause you need to have some Ethereum as well as some chain games in your wallet in order to actually gamble. And then I was going to go ahead and swap my die for chain games, which you can see is no problem to do, except I can get my 60 chain games for a network fee of $56.87. Now that's way better than yesterday, which it was $140. So basically I would need to, I took my $50 and put that into Coinbase. I brought it over here and that already went down to 30 bucks by the time all those fees were removed. I still don't have enough Ethereum to even swap $10 worth of DAI into chain. So here's the deal, guys. You can buy chain games probably for the lowest fees using the program gate.io, and then you can send it over here. You're still going to be getting a network fee. You still have to have Ethereum and chain games over here. But the reason why people aren't actually gambling yet is because if I wanted to get in yesterday, I would have been spending about $200 before I would have even started. And then I would have only been left with like $50 worth of chain games. Like I would have literally turned like $200 into $50, $50 right away. And let's go back to the battle website. So when I go back to the battle website and I go to Call of Duty and I look at all the upcoming matches, not only do they not have anyone signed up, but this one right here, entry fee of $5 and there's 50 people in the contest, meaning the pool would be $250. The prize pool payout is $237.50. So despite being this decentralized way to gamble with each other, Chain Game still takes a fee. It is taking $12.50 off of the top of that prize pool. This right here, we've got 50 people in it. Oh, it's free. All right, so that one's sponsored. So that's cool. I think all these sponsored one where it's paid by advertisers is an awesome way for uh, people to compete. And it would be so much fun. Like I'm sure kids would do that all day if it's free and they can just win money. I think that's awesome, right? Um, but when we look at these other ones, it's five bucks, there's 50 people. Again, 1250 taken off. We've got money taken off in all these, which I don't blame Chain Games for just taking a fee. That makes sense. But it also is kind of like if they are charging fees like this, which are comparable 
to the amount of fees that you would get from DraftKings, then they're not really solving any problems. All they're doing is, is really just adding a problem because it takes so much money to buy chain games in Ethereum in order to even get the stuff over here. And then no one's even playing that the only reason that I would really do this or make a ton of sense is if they weren't taking any fee at all or the fee was a lot less because this is about a 5% fee or it's exactly a 5% fee that they are taking here. Um, and that right there is just, it's not appealing to use at all right now, right? It's really not um, appealing to use from a uh, sports betting perspective. And that's why it's like, either I'm reviewing this project, this project six months too early and I'm not being fair, or they are really far behind right now and there's just a lot of hype on this project so it's just something to keep your eye on if you're invested in it make sure that the team is keeping up with the roadmap because the roadmap looks amazing but it's also extremely difficult to execute on nothing about that roadmap is just a given that they'll do it because they are looking for integrations with humongous companies that are also um, kind of their competitors in a way because they don't even need to make blockchain technology if if xbox wanted to compete they don't need to make their own coin they could just make it that you can tra trade five dollars for Xbox points, they already do this. They already have their own currency in Xbox gamer points. They could just make it that you're just betting each other in Xbox gamer points and facilitating that whole thing. And you could argue, oh, it's not as secure as blockchain technology, but you also know that you're not really gonna see people like losing money and not getting paid by Microsoft if they set this up like officially on their website. So I think that if Xbox wanted to easily just integrate this with their games already, they wouldn't be looking at that long of a process. And if chain games pose an honest threat to take over, that's when you know the companies adjust to, to not let them. So that's why I think a lot of these crypto projects, despite having the coolest looking roadmaps and the best sounding white papers, probably won't actually make it when they're going up against the actual you know huge companies that have been here for years and years and years that already have the market share and already have the customer base, already have the money, already have all of the audience assets to be able to just take any of these supposed threats that crypto would offer and, and take them down pretty quickly. But what I will say, guys, is Super Crypto Cart is actually like a lot of fun. So we are going to end this on a positive note here. I am going to show you a race through the Crypto City, my personal favorite map. Um, I like to actually race with the Chain Games cart. I'm on expert mode. So if I take first place, honestly, this is pretty difficult, at least for me. But let's go ahead, turn on Chain Games. I love the music that they have for these songs too. And let's get us a W. You don't have to give me 100k likes. I did get fourth place though. That's really not too bad for expert mode. If you don't believe me, go get Super Crypto Cart for free. It's an awesome way for this company to introduce themselves to people on a great note of having this free bait to get people to the website. You can see available games. They got Chano, Madden. They got a lot of EA partnerships, which is almost as big as it gets. They also had a Fortnite partnership, which they lost. I'm not sure of the details on that. You can research further, but there's really only so much information that's given to the public on why that partnership fell through. But if they had the Fortnite partnership, that would be awesome. One last thing I'll say about Chain Games of why I generally like uh, video game crypto projects a little bit more is because the target demographic for chain games is in line with the general amount of people who are in crypto. So they're likely not gonna have a lot of resistance to the fact that it's a crypto version of sports gambling, right? You don't have to tell them why the crypto component's uh, important and then get the, them to use it. You can already just be like, it's crypto, but for esports, and they're like, I'm in, right? They're already like on board. So I think the target demographic is great for this project. I think the roadmap looks amazing. I think if they execute on that, I will wish I would have held a lot more chain games than what I have now, but I also will say that because it doesn't look like anyone's using it at all, and there's just over about 2,000 people that have staked it, 
it's just not really at the point where it's it's even within a few months of people using it for sports gambling. I think if they were using BNB or uh, you know a different kind of blockchain apart from Ethereum where they could get the gas fees a lot lower, it would make a lot more sense. Um, but I would also want them to take a lot less off of these prize pools because it is the main problem that they solve is getting rid of the intermediary on gambling exchanges. So it already looks like chain games, despite getting rid of that person, is still being that person uh, just because they can. So it doesn't really look like they're really saving people uh, a lot of fees, which is not really giving them that upper edge in gambling that would really get a lot of people to switch over. If you can give gamblers like an even 1% edge using your platform versus betting with fiat, then there's a you know strong reason to get a lot of serious gamblers over, which would really start this whole thing snowballing. So I think that would be a lot better for their product if they weren't taking so many fees. And obviously they're gonna have to spend a lot more on marketing their events. They're gonna have to have Call of Duty events where they get a lot of players signed up and they, they figure this out to, to get people situated. But right now it's gonna cost you probably over $100 to even bet on your first match. And then you bet $2. And then if you win, you win $1.90. So it's not really an exciting platform to use. You would really just set up a personal deal with your friends at this point to bet on gambling if you were and uh, just hope that they're a man of their word after or even just pay one of your friends to be an intermediary for your exchange. But Chain Games is not currently solving the problem that it aims to solve. So if it can, it's looking pretty great. Otherwise, that's where it's at right now. To be fair, I'll look back at this project in six months. So if you wanna hit that subscribe button, you can see where Chain Games is at in six months, as well as some of the other products that I spread some FUD on, not to just be that guy, but just because that's kind of where the projects are at. I always give a, another review six months out if I do leave a negative review. So uh, be sure to check out the rest on the channel and be sure to check out the Origin Protocol review too, because you might not be glad that you're holding so much of it. All right, my name's Derek, and I will see you next time.